Hallo Leute und willkommen bei Lingua Sprach. Hello everyone and welcome to Lingua Sprach with me, Monty. Today we're going to be talking about noun cases. What are they? Let's start off. Okay, so cases are to do with nouns. Okay then, what is a noun? Hopefully you already know, but just in case. A noun is a word that refers to things or ideas. I think that's a good definition. So in English we have the examples cat, house, friendship, excitement or human. And in German, then, we could say Katze, Pause, or Freundschaft. And you can see here the great thing about German is that all nouns begin with a capital letter. So, you know what is a noun. So in a language, sentences often have more than one noun. And that means we have to be able to differentiate between the different nouns in a sentence, which noun is doing what. So I've got some sentences here in English, so we can have a look. Now, in English, the way that we decide between seeing which noun does what in the sentence is by word order. You'll see what I mean. Just bear with me for now. So in sentence number one, the man comes before the verb eats, which means that we can see that it is doing the eating. The man is doing the eating. It is the subject of the sentence. However, the dog comes after the verb. That means it is the object of the sentence. It is the dog that is being eaten by the man. Whereas in sentence number two, we've reversed the order. This time, because dog becomes before the verb, we can see that it's the dog that's doing the eating and the man is being eaten. But in German, it doesn't work that way. We use cases instead. So in today's video, I'm going to be focusing on the nominative case and the accusative case. So have a look back at this sentence. The subject in German uses the nominative case, and the object in German uses the accusative case. And we know which case is doing what by changing something called the article, and that is the word that means the or a. The word the is the definite article, by the way, and a is the indefinite article, although you don't need to know that. So how do the words the and a in German change? So we can see in the nominative, the masculine word for the is der, die, das, die. And the accusative, den, D, das, D, depending on whether the word is masculine, feminine, neuter, or plural, or whether it's nominative or accusative. And it's the same for a. Ein, eine, ein, and keine. We don't have the word a in the plural. You can't say a apples. So just use keine instead. And the accusative, einen, eine, ein, keine. Okay, so we've got the hang of that. We can see the word the and that a changes in German, not just because of the gender or the plurality of the word, but also because of the case. So have a look at this sentence here in English, the man eats the dog. Now how are we going to translate that into German? Der Mann is nominative, we use der. Ist comes from the verb essen, which is irregular, it means to eat. And now the dog, it's going to be in the accusative. So have a look at our table, we need the accusative masculine, die. Simple enough. Sentence two. But have a look at this. Because we know, because of the case, we know what's doing what, we can change the order around. Den Hund ist der Mann means exactly the same thing. You can change the order around, it seems the same meaning. Let's have a look at sentence two. The dog eats the man. Der Hund ist den Mann. Accusative, den Mann. And we can swap it around as well at the same time, and the meaning stays exactly the same. You just have to use the right article for the case and gender of your word, depending on what's happening in the sentence. Fantastic. Let's have another go. The woman uses the computer. The woman is the subject, and the computer is the object in sentence three. In sentence four, we've changed it around. The computer is the sign, the subject, and the woman is the object. Die Frau benutzt den Computer. It's den because it's in the accusative masculine. This time, der Computer, masculine nominative, benutzt die Frau. Obviously, this doesn't make sense in real life, but you get what I mean. D, feminine, accusative. What's great about the accusative case is the only time when it changes is in the masculine. The rest of them are exactly the same as in the nominative. Now, if you start not with me, just have a look at these sentences in English. The man eats the dog. Okay. Now, if we replace these with some pronouns, like I and he, he eats him. Notice how it changes. In English, we still have this idea of nominative and accusative. He is the subject, him is the object. So we've actually changed the word to mark the case in English, just as they do in German. Play around this with a bit yourself. 
And notice that in German, your only personal pronouns also change. So in the nominative, we have ich, I, du, you, er, he, sie, she, es, it. Wir, we, ihr, you, sie, they, sie, you, plural, formal. And in the accusative, it's going to change as well. Mich, dich, ihn, sie, es, uns, euch, sie, sie. Not too much change, but you need to learn them anyway. Let's have a look at some examples of that happening. I hate her. Ich hasse sie. Remember to make it change. Nominative and accusative. Ich hasse sie. If you're not sure, always go back to your tables. Or, for example, you like us. Du magst uns. The verb max comes from mögen, which is irregular. Du magst uns. Uns is the accusative here, because us is the object. And you can see how similar it is in German to English. So if you've grasped that, there's ausgezeichnet. Very well done. Keep working. If you're still not sure, go back through the video. Replay. Thanks for watching. Linguish Park.